Alrighty folks, we're gonna talk a little bit about your cabinetry in this here Go Play Travel Trailer. Come on over here. So first things first, I wanna point out here, we're using hardwood face plates on all of our cabinet doors, okay? Now there's a couple reasons why we do that. Namely, longevity and durability. All right, folks? So take a look at this here. All of my hardware is drilled into these face plates, right? And this is hardwood, so it's gonna last much better over time. The alternative that we frequently see in other travel trailers would be like particle board. Now the issue there is that when you go to a humid spot or something like that, or you come in contact with moisture, that particle board is gonna swell, right? And it's gonna it's gonna lose its rigidity. So your your hardware components, right, the constant stress, right, the employed on our hardware components over time, you're gonna break down and eventually your hardware is gonna pop out, you're gonna have all sorts of problems on your hands, which is why we went with hardwood. Furthermore, check this out. This is a great little feature here, folks. We're using mortise and tenon cabinetry on all of our face plates, okay? So these are, that's a specific type of joint, male, female joint work, if you will. And again, name of the game there, folks, longevity, right? All right, folks, another key thing about the cabinetry work in our GoPlay travel trailers is their triple threat. You're gonna hear that frequently, which means it's glued, screwed, and stapled. Not only that, our screw technology is leveraging pocket screw construction practices. So if you come back here and take a look at pocket screws, pocket screws. Now I know what you're thinking. Triple threat, isn't that a bit much? Well, we don't think so. So a little breakdown on that triple threat. It's glued, stapled, and screwed directly into the wall studs. Now check that out. I would not be doing that on any other travel trailer. All right, folks, you might notice this little black strip, and it's possible that you've seen this on other RVs, but people don't talk about it very often. Um, but we call this uh, we call this a no-slip lip, and as you can tell, the lip sits about, well, probably about a quarter of an inch higher than the actual uh, cabinet shelf itself, and the reason why we do that is because in motion, when you're on the road, you've got stuff in your cabinets they are gonna move around ever so slightly, you know? And you might have stacks of plates that maybe weigh two or three pounds. Maybe they outweigh the face plate door, right, of your, of your cabinet. Uh, and the last thing you wanna have happen on the road is you take a sharp turn, maybe a little sharper than you should have, and it causes your door to swing open and all of your grandma's china's out all over the floor, broken glass everywhere, vacation's ruined, right? No, that's why we got the no slip lip here to catch whatever might be in motion when you're on the road. Furthermore, to safeguard against breaking any of grandma's china, we've got these stronghold connection points on all of our cabinetry doors, all right? And it's pretty dang strong, folks. Next thing's next or drawers, come take a look at this. We've got real plywood on all of our drawer construction here. So it's very robust, it's gonna last much longer over time. Again, name of the game here is longevity. We're not using particle board, we're not chintzing out on you in any way. Furthermore, when it comes to our drawer guides, we're using 75 pound rated ball bearing drawer guides, okay? So you can load these puppies up with your silverware, your board games, your hush puppies, what have you. All righty, are you rolling? Okay. <laughs> I got you good too. <laughs>
We chose to use crushed membrane. Why? Well, there's three reasons. One, it's durable. Two, it's scratch resistant. Three, it is stain resistant. Now, paired with our pressed membrane countertops is the single basin sink. Now, in the tandem axles, we're going to have stainless steels. In the single axles, we're going to have the plastic. It is what it is. And we also have that paired with a nice farmhouse spout that is movable. So when you have the big dishes in here, you can move that to the side, bring it back. Awesome, awesome feature, guys. Now, come down here a little closer. Does this look normal to you? Does this look normal to your house? Maybe, maybe not. What happens is we actually did this as an under-mounted sink. You see, there's no lip here. If this was a top-mounted sink, you'd have some troubles cleaning stuff up. But with that reason, when you're done prepping, you can just wipe stuff up in there. No big deal, making it much better for cleanup. All right, folks, another great feature on our GoPlay travel trailers is this stovetop oven combo unit, okay? We got this nice little glass topper here to extend your countertop space if you need a little bit more prep space and so forth. Now, when I'm ready to get down and dirty, do some cooking, I just fold that sucker up. Now, you'll notice I've got a tri-burner stovetop setting here. Now, why did we opt in for this type of setup? Well, let me tell you a little bit about this. Back here, you got two burners, but this front one here is actually a high output Burner. This guy puts off 9,000 BTUs of, of gas power, okay? Now, why is that important? Well, as we all know, with, with uh, variation in elevation, right, atmospheric pressure is going to change, right? So the higher I get, the, uh, the atmospheric pressure decreases, right? And thus does my boiling point. Now, another key thing to remember about higher elevation is that there's a lot less oxygen at higher elevations, right? Which is why we require a high output, right? BTU burner at higher elevations to be able to offset the oxygen deprivation and be able to get our water boiling nice and quick. Now another great little uh, little LED feature here, you see these LED rings around all of my, uh, my stovetop knobs. This is great because uh, for people like me who just aren't very smart or in the kitchen very often, I turn this sucker and I know exactly which one's hot. So I know, don't do that, it's bad. Furthermore, check out that oven. I can fit all kinds of stuff in there, body parts, uh, pizza, rolls, lots of pizza. <laughs> Alrighty folks, I'm no Bobby Flay, okay, and I like my bacon crispy in the morning. If you know, you know. That's why we got this nice little vent fan right here, to get rid of those greasy, nasty smells. And I'm not talking about these ones, I'm talking about these ones over here, okay? Alright guys, another cool feature that we have on our GoPlay travel trailers in the kitchen is the 12 volt refrigerator. Now, there's two types of fridges out there in this class of RVs. There's 12 volt refrigerator and there's a gas electric refrigerator. Gas electric refrigerators are the standards. Now, we chose the 12 volt. Why? Because you can run this thing directly off the batteries without shore power. So another reason why we chose 12 volt is that you can run these things down the road legally. Now why do I say legally? Because a gas electric, you can run that down the road, but there's two ways to do that. One, you can pay $2,000 to get an inverter, or you can run off propane, which is illegal. And plus, the gas electric fridges, not the 12 volts, are the number one reason for spontaneous combustion on travel trailers. The reason is because the gas electric fridges have a pilot light on the inside of these things. You can't see it, but it's still there. The other thing is they have exhaust vents. Critters can get into those, like birds. Mice can create nests, right? And with that pilot light and that heat blowing out, it creates hot, like you kindle fire. <laughs> Blows up. You don't want that. It's a recipe for a sparky disaster. Two other reasons, guys, that we chose the 12 volt fridge. It's eight cubic feet instead of six cubic feet, which is a standard gas electric. Plus, this thing cools down a lot quicker than your gas electric fridge will. 
And last but not least, this thing comes with five different cold settings for you guys going up in the mountains where it's cooler and all the way down to the beaches where it's good and hot. When you got a good night and you pump this thing up to five, I want it cold. When you're like, eh, I don't need as much cold because my home is just freezing to death in there and you get all frostbitten, turn it down a little bit. So you get a little bit of range, guys. It's good for you.